Miss Mary Pask opens with the nervous thoughts of our narrator as he struggles to decide how he could explain his experiences that fateful night to the only soul who would care, Grace Bridgeworth. Months before, he had been spending time in Brittany to paint the scenery when suddenly he was struck by a memory of his friend Grace requesting he visit her dear sister Mary if ever he were nearby. Full of himself and a bit of self-important duty to his friend, the narrator decides to brave the journey to her home, fighting against the shrieking gale and the heavy fog that shut down on him. He reaches the empty little home of Miss Mary Pask and is struck again by an entirely different memory. As he waits alone in the dark, he remembers Miss Mary Pask is dead. However, before he can turn and run from this grave of a home, Mary appears herself delighted to see him dressed in baggy white garments at the top of the stairs. The narrator is sick and terrified while Mary converses with him, chipper and uninhibited as she announces how lonely she has been ever since she died. Desperate for companionship, she begs him to stay, but the narrator is ultimately overwhelmed and flees the house, out through the doors and away from the undead spinster. Bringing new meaning to the phrase, worried sick, the narrator is upset to the point of affecting his health and spends some time in a sanitarium, waiting months before he can see Mary's living sister again. When he finally meets with Grace, the poor man faces another nasty shock, that Mary Pask is not dead at all, but had simply suffered from a cataleptic trance. Though he listened patiently to Grace's story, he felt that he would never again be interested in Mary Pask or in anything concerning her.